Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I am your guide to wisdom. Thank you for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. By consuming these daily wisdom nuggets, the principles we examine will help you to live a disciplined and successful life, which will result in doing what is right, just and fair on each day of life's journey. This is day 48 of our trek. And we will continue for the next three days to look at how changing our thinking can dramatically change our lives. We are recording our podcast from our studios at Home 2 in Charlotte, North Carolina. We are focused on our client work and are also preparing to head back to the big house on Friday. By the time this episode is released, we will be in Marietta and then heading north to the Akron Canton area for the annual Rob reunion, which is Paula's mom's maiden name. We try to attend every year if we can. Family ties are important and it is a good time to celebrate together. I will give you an update in a few days of that day's activities. The hiking analogies that we use for Wisdom Trek fit so well with our trek through life each day. It is when we take one step at a time, over a long period of time, that we make the progress that we desire. Being on life's trail allows you to truly experience the full spectrum of human emotion, sometimes all in one day. A moment of frustration and despair is seamlessly followed by some peace and beauty. And so it is with life. Just like hiking, we need to plan and also take time to think and rest. So far, we've stopped at waypoints 1 through 7 on this segment of our trek to analyze our thinking so that we will become more wise and successful. And today, we are going to look at waypoints number 8 and 9. But before we do that, we ended our podcast yesterday, and I asked you to consider two more questions. Question for waypoint number 6 was... Am I unleashing the enthusiasm of possibility thinking to find solutions for even seemingly impossible problems? And our question for waypoint number seven was, am I regularly visiting the past to gain true perspective and think with understanding? I do encourage you to consider these questions each day and apply them to your lives. This will help you to change your thinking and to start down the trail to a changed life. One of the benefits of hiking on trails is that they are not used frequently and we do not have to compete with the masses of people as you would on a busy thoroughfare. This also applies to waypoint number 8 where we have just arrived and that waypoint is to question popular thinking. Question popular thinking can be challenging but there are valid reasons for you to do so. When people follow a trend they usually don't give it much thought. Although you may view popular thinking as a source of safety and security There's a large difference between acceptance and intelligence. Because popular thinking favors the status quo, it discourages innovation and brings average results. I have been an entrepreneur all my life and someone who trends to question anything that the masses are following. I have not had a major issue at this point, but I know it's easy to fall into it. So here are five different ways that you can question the acceptance of popular thinking. First, think before following. You need to consider what is best rather than what is popular. When you challenge popular thinking, it means that you will need to step off the well-worn trail. You will need to go against popular thinking. You may be blazing your own trail, but it often holds the seeds of vision and opportunities that others won't recognize. Second, appreciate different types of thinking. When you appreciate the ways that other people think, you open yourself up to embrace innovation and change. It is useful to spend time with people who think differently than you do. Third, question your own way of thinking. It will be a major temptation to return to the way of thinking that once worked well, even if it's no longer effective. You must realize that your successes of today can often be the enemy of your successes tomorrow. Fourth, try new things in new ways. In order to get yourself out of a rut, innovate in small, everyday ways. By thinking unconventional, you will question the way things are done and look for new options. And fifth, get accustomed to being uncomfortable. Now all change is uncomfortable for each of us and popular thinking is comfortable. When you embrace new ways of thinking and the achievements that will result, you will have some discomfort. Embrace thinking that may not be popular and make decisions based upon what works best and what is right. Do not follow what is commonly accepted unless it proves right, just, and fair. As I think about questioning popular thinking, it certainly reminds me of how Christ himself questioned the popular thinking of his day. He questioned the religious leaders continually because they were more interested in self-promotion and preservation than pleasing God. In Matthew chapter 6, he warned against self-promotion of the religious leader on public giving, prayer, and fasting. In Matthew chapter 22, 16, the religious leaders themselves, when they were trying to trap Christ, proclaimed the truth. Teacher, they said, we know how honest you are. 
You teach the way of God truthfully. You are impartial and don't play favorites. So our question at waypoint number eight is, am I consciously rejecting the limitations of common thinking in order to accomplish uncommon results? So let's move on down the trail a bit to waypoint number nine. And it is benefit from shared thinking. When you seek out and value other people's thoughts, you can accomplish more than you can alone. Shared thinking is faster, more innovative, and stronger than solo thinking. The ideas that result from your shared thinking benefit both you and those that you are sharing with, which brings greater value overall. To benefit from shared thinking, there are five different things that you can do. First, value others' ideas. When you are open to the ideas of shared thinking, you become more emotionally secure and value the interactive process. Second, move from competition to cooperation. When you think cooperatively, you will help to complete the ideas of others. It is then that the best idea forms rather than one person offering just a single idea. Third, have a plan when you are meeting with others. When you meet with others for shared thinking, always have a reason for the meeting and an expectation of what you will contribute or receive from the discussion. Fourth, meet with the right people. Do not choose shared thinking partners based on feelings of friendship or convenience. When you meet with the right people for shared thinking, it will help uncover the best ideas. And fifth, bring values to those who are collaborators. Shared thinking is not just about you. Make sure everyone is bringing and receiving value from the times of sharing. Shared thinking is clear throughout Scripture also. One passage that comes to mind is Matthew 18, verses 19 and 20. And Christ said, I also tell you this, If two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. Shared, but not necessarily popular thinking, is crucial for wisdom and success. So that brings us to our question at waypoint number nine, which is, am I consistently searching the minds of others that think over my head and achieve compounding results? We need to learn and then adopt the thinking habits of wise and successful people. Thinking that questions the popular, but shares with the wise. As your guide, friend, mentor, and fellow sojourner, let me know how I can help to foster within you so that you do not fall prey to popular thinking, but instead share thinking with those who are wise and successful. Well, that will finish our podcast for today. If you've missed any of the previous podcasts, especially from this week, please check out Wisdom Trek at iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or at wisdom-trek.com. Tomorrow we'll continue our trek to investigate waypoints number 10 and 11 as we continue to change our thinking which will literally change our lives. So please join us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. And if you enjoy these daily doses of wisdom, I encourage you to help us in the following five ways. Please leave your name and email address at our website at the bottom right-hand corner of any page in the sidebar. This will allow us to update you with special information about Wisdom Trek. Two, leave us feedback about the podcast at wisdom-trek.com. Three, please subscribe at iTunes or Stitcher. Four, leave us a rating if you haven't done so already so we can gain exposure for Wisdom Trek. And number five, share with your family and friends to journey with us on our Wisdom Trek. Thank you for allowing me to serve you in this way each day. The journal from this podcast can be found at wisdom-trek.com where we'll also have pictures, tweetable quotes, wisdom nuggets, and free resources. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly or fully, love unconditionally, Listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy the journey, and create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.